welcome to our series of videos in which we're going to take an in-depth look at various tanks. We're at the Military Vehicle Technology Foundation in Portola Valley, California, and in this episode we're going to have a look at their M26 known as the Pershing. The M26 is defined in a manual as a heavily armored, fully tracked laying combat vehicle of low silhouette with torsion bar suspension and individually sprung road wheels. Now whilst this may seem pretty self-evident to us now, it is important to remember how much of a change this was from this predecessor, the M4 Medium known as the Sherman. Now we're going to be having a look at this vehicle in two segments, firstly the exterior and the powertrain, and then the crew compartment. So let's get cracking. The hull consists of cast sections front and rear which are welded to the hull sides. There is another cast segment which goes across the engine deck that's for strengthening. At the front you'll see your horn, blackout markers, service drive lights, two lifting eyes, two towing eyes, 30 cal, and underneath we're going to have a drain valve which drains water off the bottom of the tank. The suspension consists of six pairs of road wheels, each pair being mounted to a road wheel arm on its own torsion bar. The number one road wheel arm is physically connected by way of an eccentric spindle to the adjusting idler. What this will do is as the road wheel arm comes up, it will push the idler wheel forward and thus maintain track tension. The arm is also equipped with a bump stop and what this does is it limits the range of motion of the arm. Numbers 1, 2, 5 and 6 arms are also equipped with shock absorbers and what these will do is reduce the rocking effect of the torsion bar suspension. The idler is also how the track tension is adjusted. To do this what you do is you get a very large wrench and you loosen the lock nut. You then take an even larger net wrench and with the aid of a cheater pipe and usually two or three burly lads you will then physically lever the idler forwards or backwards to change the tension. Once you've done that, you then lock up your locking nut again, and away you go. Now the track tension is checked by placing one inch blocks on the numbers two and four road wheels, and then you check to make sure you have a one quarter inch gap above the third. Three types of track were available, steel, rubber, or these rubber backed steel chevrons, there are 82 links per side. The tracks are connected in a manner familiar to modern tankers. You have end connectors with wedge bolts and two-piece center guides. The tank infantry telephone is rather securely mounted to the right rear of the vehicle. Infantryman will come up, bring the telephone up, push the talk, and then when he's done, replace it back into its mounting. So after having traversed the turret so that we could open up the engine compartment, we can now see the Ford GAF. This V8 engine, developed from the Ford GAA of the M4A3, cranks out 500 horsepower with a maximum RPM of 2,800. It uses a wet sump lubrication system, the dipstick for which is located right there. All right, now the auxiliary engine is a 13.6 horsepower four-cylinder engine, which runs at a constant 1,800 RPM and has an automatic choke. Use to drive the generator when the batteries are to be charged or auxiliary electrical equipment is needed and the engine is not running. It can be started either electrically or should you fail to notice the battery drain by use of a manual handle. There are two fuel tanks on the vehicle. The one on the left side is 116 gallons. The one on the right side, however, is a little bit shorter, 75 and a half gallons, because it has to leave room for the auxiliary engine and the generator. So as you move more towards the rear of the vehicle, what we have here is a radiator filler cap the gun travel lock and down underneath here is the transmission. This I have three speeds forward and one reverse. Transmission oil level, differential oil level, this is the controlled type differential so called because it actually controls the steering. What one, this is is one of the steering linkages as you pull back on the brake handle this will move and apply brake pressure to three drum brakes per side on the differential. Final transmission of the power is conducted through the universal joint, out through the final drives and then the sparkle wheels. <sighs> oh. 
Alright, so that's it for the engine compartment. Next time we're going to move into the driver's hole.